you want to purify DNA, you can often win if you take that DNA on a column spin. So we often have a lot of different kits that we can use that have columns like this that allow us to purify DNA or RNA. So whether it's a mini prep um, when you're actually purifying the plasmid, whether it's one of these like a PCR purification kit or some sort of DNA cleaning concentrator or a legal cleaning concentration concentrator. The basic idea is we're going to get DNA to bind, we're going to wash everything off, and then we're going to get the DNA to unbind. Um, and we're going to do all this by manipulating the conditions so that the DNA goes from wanting to hang out with the liquid to going to wanting to hang out with the membrane to wanting to hang out with the liquid again um, so that it'll come out. And now we've washed all that other crud off and so we have nice pure DNA. So so here is more on the biochemistry of how these actually work. This is done, um, often typically done in like a centrifuge to basically pull things through this column. Um, it can also be done with the vacuum manifold. If you have a lot of samples, these can kind of, instead of going into a tube, it just kind of plugs into one of these. Um, and then you change the stopcocks to allow the, the vacuum to go through and kind of pull the liquid through. And so we're going to start off by getting the conditions right for the DNA to bind. And so if we think about what DNA is, well, DNA, it has basically this negatively charged phosphate backbone. And if you have something that's negatively charged, well, it's going to want to hang out with things that are positively charged, or it's going to want to hang out with things that are partially positively charged. And so water fits the bill in terms of partial charge because of polarity, where basically the oxygen and the hydrogens in water, they don't share their electrons fairly. So they're joined together by sharing pairs of electrons that are negatively charged, and the oxygen hogs them. And so the oxygen is going to be partly negatively charged, and those hydrogens are going to be partly positively charged. And so those pos partial positive charges are going to hang out with the DNA and you end up with having DNA kind of coated in a layer of water. Um, and basically we're going to have to remove this water We're going and we're going to have to make it so that the DNA finds this membrane attractive. Now, what is this membrane? Well, this membrane is made of silica, which is amorphous silicon dioxide. So amorphous is like not a defined shape or structure. And basically there can be a lot of modifications to silica and there's like proprietary stuff. So we don't know exactly the structure of the silica, but I do know that it has some oxygens that can protonate. And so they can basically go from being an O minus to being an OH. And when they're an O minus, basically they have a negative charge. And how do we get it? We don't want it to have a negative charge because if it has a negative charge, well, then it's going to be repelled from the negatively charged DNA. Instead, we want to neutralize this membrane if we want to have any chance of getting the DNA to bind it. And so we need to make conditions where there's a lot of protons around, a lot of H plus that those oxygens can latch onto. And when we talk about there being a lot of protons around, what we're talking about is the solution being acidic. And so we want a low pH. Now it's a low pH because it's basically pH is a measure of the proton availability, but it's an inverse log. And so the higher the proton concentration, the lower the pH, the more acidic the solution. And so if we have a low pH solution, we're going to have lots of these protons around, and these can neutralize the silica. And so now the silica is not negatively charged, but it's still not very attractive to the DNA. Now, there's still other options for the DNA. There's still like parts where you can have polar bonds and you can have hydrogen bonding and things like this. But we're also actually going to have a lot of hydrophobic interactions. So kind of interactions that are because these molecules, the water is excluding them and they're going to kind of cling to one another. And this is going to be because we're going to make it so that the DNA is going to be really blah. We're going to kind of neutralize that negative charge. And how we're going to do this is by using salt. And so salt, basically salt is a, going to be a, cut, a neutral version of a 
positive, it's a neutral overall, but it has a positively charged part, a cation, and a negatively charged part, an anion. And when you dissolve a salt, you typically dissociate it. And so when we stick a salt into water, if we stick, say, table salt, sodium chloride into water, these are going to split up into sodium, a sodium cation, so a positively charged sodium, and a chlorine negative um, anion, so a negatively charged chlorine. And so what happens when we stick this salt, guanidium chloride, into water is we're going to get guanidium, which is positively charged, and chloride, which is negatively charged. And that positively charged guanidium is going to bind to the backbone of the DNA, and this is going to neutralize that DNA. Now the DNA is no longer negatively charged, and since we're at a low pH, the silica membrane is not negatively charged. And so both of these are kind of blah. They're both kind of blah, and so they're not going to be, the water is not going to be attracted to them, but they, so they're going to kind of be excluded from that water, and they're going to um, find refuge in one another, kind of. Um, and so the water would rather hang out with other water molecules. And so these are left with hanging out with one another. And we get the DNA to bind. But we still have to, in order to even get the salt to find that DNA, we have to kind of remove the water coat. And so how we can do this, well, it's helped out in a couple ways. One is that the salt that we're using is special. It's not just at any salt, like we don't have table salt in there. Instead, we have a chiotropic salt. So chiotrope, basically this brings chaos. And so it brings chaos to water. The, the DNA is basically surrounded by this ordered water layer, this like solvent layer. And a chiotropic salt disrupts that. So the chiotrope is going to come and it's kind of going to loosen up this water network. And this is going to make it easier for the um, for the DNA to even like approach the membrane. Additionally, what's going to happen is that you have isopropanol in here. And so isopropanol is going to be less polar than water. So polarity is going to be going back to like what we talked about with the oxygen being electron hogging. Polarity is kind of like when you have a partial charge in a molecule because something is kind of pulling the electron density towards it more um, and pulling, leaving the other thing part, part partially positive and that part partially negative. And you end up with polarity where it's where you have this separation of partial charge in a molecule. Now, oxygen and hydrogen, those shared unfairly. So that's why we end up with water being really polar. But carbon and hydrogen share pretty fairly. And so if we look at isopropanol, we see that it has a lot of these hydrogens and carbons. So all of this is going to be kind of like nonpolar. And this is going to reduce the overall polarity of the solution. And it's going to reduce the ability. Um, it's going to reduce the ability of the water to kind of hide things. And this is going to make it easier for the DNA and for the silica to find one another and kick off the water. So all of these conditions together are going to make it so that the DNA is going to want to bind to the silica membrane. Now that the DNA is bound on there, we want to take advantage of it being bound to get rid of the stuff we don't want hanging around. And so this stuff includes all that high salt that you just added because you wanted to get the DNA to bind to the membrane. Now that it's bound to the membrane, though, we can wash the salt off because basically the, the DNA, it's kind of long and it's made all these extensive interactions with the membrane. But we can make the conditions so that the salt, which is small, um, it can kind of get dislodged more easily. It can dissolve more easily. Um, and so we want to make conditions that aren't really ideal for salt and aren't really ideal for DNA um, because we can't really make the conditions where they're really ideal for the salt, but not for the DNA. But we can get kind of partly there. And so both the DNA and, and or at least DNA when it's not have it surrounded by high salt, and the salts themselves are going to really like water because water is going to have that partial positive and partial negative parts. Um, and salts have positive and negative or either positive or negative and DNA has this negatively charged backbone. So under normal conditions that DNA would really wanna hang out with the water, 
Um, and so would those salts. And so basically, we don't want to add water yet. We don't want to actually get the DNA unstuck yet. But we want to add something that's going to be a little more water-like. And so before we add isopropanol, and we talked about how the isopropanol had those like three carbon groups that made it, um, those like hydrocarbon groups that were making it so that it was non-polar. And this was making it so that's like less water-like, um, less to offer a charged or a partial charged thing. When we talk about ethanol, well, here it has one fewer of those hydrocarbon um, groups. And so it's going to be more water-like. There's less nonpolar character. Um, and so it's going to be able to dissolve those salts, which are smaller, um, and they have an easier time kind of getting dissolved than this DNA, which is this long and it's kind of all like you can think of it as kind of like having all these extensive interactions with the silica, it's going to take more ideal conditions for it in order to come off. So by switching from isopropanol to ethanol, we're now able to get rid of all those salts that we used in order to help get the DNA stuck. And now we want to actually change the conditions to get the DNA stuck after we remove that ethanol. And so it's really important that you remove that ethanol really well. And so basically what you want to do is typically you do a wash step where you have this ethanol wash. I mean, ethanol is part of it. It's not just ethanol, um, but you have this wash. And then what you want to do is you want to actually going to spin the column again in order to make sure you remove all the ethanol. The ethanols can interfere with various downstream things. So like if you ever go to run it, if you were to go to run a gel and your gel, like have you ever had that happen where it kind of like floats out of the well, where your DNA sample kind of floats out of the well? It could be because there's some ethanol left over. And so to avoid the ethanol um, like carryover, what you want to do is after you after you spin it, um, you pour out the ethanol that was in there in your white, in your little like waste container. And then you put your tube back in carefully and then you spin it again, sometimes for like a longer time in order to really make sure that it all dries out. You want to pour out the waste in between so that you don't have, so there's plenty of room for all the ethanol to get pulled out. Um, it's not going to get contaminated and that sort of thing. And now it's time to elute things. And so when we want to elute things, we want to basically reverse all the conditions that we made in order to get things to bind. So what did we do to get things to bind? Well, we went to a low, we went to high salt and low pH. So we want to reverse that. We want to go to a lower salt and a higher pH. There's like elution buffers that it comes with, just like a pH buffer. Um, or you can basically just elute in water. And if you're doing it in water, you want to make sure that's really, that's like that ultra pure um, nuclease free water. So you're not eluting your DNA into like DNA chewers. Now at a lower salt concentration, well, we kind of just did that when we were washing the salts off, but now we want to keep the salt concentration low and really promote the um, re promote the repulsion between the DNA and the silica by making it so that the silica is negatively charged, which we can do by removing those protons that have neutralized it. And so we want to go to where there's fewer protons around, which means we want a higher pH, a more alkaline or basic solution. Under those conditions, the silica membrane is gonna become negatively charged and the DNA is negatively charged. And now without all the salt around, the negative charge is actually exposed. This is going to make it repel from the membrane. And now it's going to be really attractive to the water because it has those negative charges exposed as well as all the bases and things like this. So the DNA is going to pick up a nice water code. It's going to dissolve, meaning that each like of the copies of DNA is going to have a full water coat. And now that it's dissolved in this nice water coat, it can actually go through the column and into your collection tube. Um, and so at this point, you want to have it in a nice clean tube. So before you add that elution buffer, you want to stick it into a clean tube. Um, and so before when we were doing all those other steps, we were sticking it into this like capless waste tube. Um, and so in between when we 
when you pull it through, you like pour the waste out and you put your tube back in. Um, and you do this in the same tube for all of your like wash steps and things like this. But then you want to make sure, sure, sure that on your last step, you're actually sticking it into a clean tube and one of the, like a nice clock capped up in door so you can store it. Um, and you want to make sure that you have that you labeled on the lid and on the side. Um, note that sometimes these columns, these have a tendency to, because you have to kind of centrifuge them with the cap open, the cap has a tendency to kind of snap off. And so you want to make sure that when you're doing this, you have the cap, like the lids kind of like, you can angle the lids and make sure that they're all like kind of angled in the same angles um, so that they don't snap into one another. They don't like overlap and break off, uh, but also make sure that you have everything nicely labeled. So that if something does snap off, you still know which tube corresponded to what. So for some of the columns, they actually have a lid and some of them they don't. Um, and especially if they don't, you want to make sure that you have a, you have a label on here somewhere and on your tube. When you're sticking the columns into and out of the tube, you want to be really careful because basically what's going to happen is if you're not careful, if you just kind of like smash it into the side, now what's going to happen is you're kind of contaminating this bottom part where the clean stuff should come out with the dirty stuff. And so you would be defeating the purpose if you're then like sticking this in and contaminating this and then alluding into contamination. And so you don't want to do that, just like you don't want to elute your final thing into your waste or the remnants of your waste. Um, and so make sure, make sure, make sure you stick it into a clean tap tube. Um, definitely. Seeing that, seeing that happen, um, not put sticking it into a clean tube, that is. If you want a higher concentration of DNA, what you can do is use a lower volume. Um, so, and then if you want to make sure you get all the DNA, um, you care more about the yield than the concentration, you can use a larger volume. Um, so, but for the higher concentration, you're going to use a smaller volume. Um, when you're doing the solution, it can help if you kind of let the liquid sit on the membrane for a minute um, and then you spin it through. So overall, what we did was we got the conditions right for DNA to bind tight. So we had this chiotropic salt. We had the goinidium thiocyanate that was going to break up the water coat. It was bringing chaos to the water. We had isopropanol. Isopropanol was going to help the DNA find and bind that silica gel membrane. And the low pH makes it sure that they don't repel by making it so that that silica membrane is neutralized. But you need to make sure that the pH really is low. So you might need to check those protons before moving on. So some of the kits have a pH indicator that helps you check if the pH is low enough. Um, and so if it's yellow, let it mellow, but if it's orange or purple, um, you need to lower that pH and you can do that by adding sodium acetate. Now it's time to let it bind and take it for a wind. Um, so you want to get it now that you've made the conditions right, you wanna actually get it to bind to that membrane. Then you centrifuge it to pull the liquid through the membrane. Now that your DNA is bound, now wash and toss to show those salts who's boss. So ethanol is going to be able to remove the salt um, now that you now that it's done its job. Um, you had all that high salt that you were using to help get conditions right to bind, but now you don't want that salt around anymore. The ethanol is going to help remove it. And now spin it again so that ethanol won't win. You don't want that ethanol to interfere with your downstream processes. Um, and so you spin it again without having added any more um, after you pour out the ethanol, like after you pour out the wash solution, spin it again so that the ethanol is all taken out. Um, and now speaking of taking things out, we want to let that DNA out. And so we're going to deprotonate that membrane. Um, so DNA will repel and the DNA will pick up a nice hydration shell. Basically what you want to do is you want to lower the pH so that the silica membrane loses those protons, becomes negatively charged and repels the DNA, which now the DNA is no longer shielded by all that salt. Um, and so it's going to be attractive to the water. Um, it's going to pick up a water coat and it'll elute out. And now once it's eluded out, you can go and check the purity with something like a nano drop um, where you're basically shining UV light through 
seeing how much gets absorbed. Um, and this will tell you about the concentration of your DNA. And you can look at a couple of different um, UV uh, wavelengths in order to get ideas about the pure the um, purity. Now there are different types of kits and there are different kits. There are kits for like RNA as well. Uh, make sure that you're using the right kit with the right columns and all that good stuff. Um, but these are column kits are super duper helpful and a super major time saver. So happy spins. <laughs>